the Golden State Warriors have finally found their new backup point guard to play behind Steph Curry. What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got more NBA news to talk about with you guys. This time it is currently being reported that the Golden State Warriors have agreed to a one-year deal signing Brad Warnermaker to a 2.25 million deal. This is all being reported by Woj. Now, I actually believe this is a very interesting one by the Golden State Warriors because honestly, I still feel like there may be a couple of priorities for the Warriors. Of course, one of the things is desperately getting that new bench core in. But also another thing that I find to be, you know, at one of the stage, one of the biggest things was kind of finding that new starting shooting guard with the team. Of course, though, we do know now that the Golden State Warriors have signed, or traded rather, for Kelly Oubre Jr., meaning that Andrew Wiggins can now be that starting shooting guard following the unfortunate injury of Clay Thompson, obviously. And now... The main, you know, couple of things that I thought the Warriors really needed to go out and do was, of course, sign that backup point guard slash shooting guard to the team. Now, the reason why this is the one of the most important things for the Golden State Warriors was just based on the fact that Steph Curry, of course, missed quite a bit of last season, pretty much the majority of it. And again, with Steph Curry kind of being out, and I do believe Steph Curry will most likely, you know, have a couple more injuries again this season. Hopefully he doesn't, of course, but the more likely chance is he most likely will, which means the Golden State Warriors will desperately be needing of a point guard. Now, again, I honestly thought getting a backup point guard, that could be a really good playmaker. Very similar to a Matthew Dellavedova or Rajon Rondo type of player would have been the best case scenario. The reason I'm saying that is because the Golden State Warriors already have bulk scorers, for example, James Wiseman, Kali Oubre, Eric Pascal, Andrew Wiggins, etc. I feel like, you know, getting a backup point guard that could be a nice playmaker would have been the right thing. Instead, they kind of went in a little bit of a different direction. Yes, Brad Wanamaker does have pretty decent playmaking, but that's not necessarily what he's known for. He's kind of known for being that high energetic defensive type of player. Of course, you know, Kemba Walker being not exactly the greatest defender at all, having a backup point guard for the Boston Celtics that was a relatively good defender. And even, you know, when they had Kyrie Irving, who wasn't the greatest defender at point guard, having that backup defensive point guard was kind of the thing that they needed to have. And, you know, kind of Brad Wanamaker being that guy made a lot of sense for the Celtics at the time. But now, I feel like, you know, the Celtics, they've moved on from him. They've actually signed Jeff T. it looks like, which I may be making a separate video on that, not set in stone at this time. But they've already got, you know, Marcus Smart, who can play a lot of that backup point guard defensively as well. So, Brad Wanamaker wasn't too much of a, uh, you know, big signing that the Boston Celtics actually needed to do. Therefore, the Golden State Warriors were able to actually swoop, you know, for him and get him to be their new backup point guard. Now, was he the right decision? If I was the Golden State Warriors, there probably would have been a couple other players that I would have targeted. For example, Rajon Rondo, who, again, I do believe because of Clay's injury, they did actually have a little bit of tax money to go out and get another player like Rondo. I honestly thought he would have been a really you know, good guy to bring in. Although the issue is, if you have Steph Curry with injuries, Rondo does get a lot of injuries as well, and you pretty much could be replacing an injured player with an injured player, so that is the issue with Rajon Rondo, I suppose. When it comes to Matthew Della Vadova, I believe most teams believe he's most likely going to be signing with the Cleveland Cavaliers again. I can't really see him leave the Cavs. The reason he left the first time was, of course, just based on the fact that uh, the Milwaukee Bucks pretty much offered him a contract that he couldn't have declined and was going to be nowhere near the money that the Cavs were offering. But now I feel like Every team in the NBA is going to be offering Dali that kind of similar vet veterans minimum type of contract. So I do feel like, you know, he will most likely re-sign with the Cleveland Cavaliers. But yeah, obviously, best term, best case scenario, Steph not getting injured. Again, there is obviously the normal case scenario where he's probably going to miss a couple games here and there. And I guess Brad Warnermaker, you know, definitely saw the opportunity to leave the Celtics and come in to be the new starting, you know, point guard for at least 10 games of the season, maybe when Steph's out with an injury and whatnot. 
So this is obviously very, very good for him. I'm not exactly too sure. If I had the opportunity to play with offensive powers like Andrew Wiggins, Kali Oubre Jr., James Wiseman, etc., you would definitely do that if you were Brad Wanamaker. But now, you know, bringing in Andrew Wiggins and Kali Oubre were very good ideas for the Golden State Warriors. I just think now that they need to kind of go out and build that bench even more. I'm not exactly too sure who they can go and get, because right now their bench is currently sitting at Marquise Chris as the center off the bench, Eric Pascal as the power forward, Jordan Paul as the shooting guard, Brad Wanamaker as that point guard, and I'm not exactly too sure even who their backup small forward is, so... If they could go out and get a really nice backup small forward to come off the bench, like a Justin Holiday or someone like that, that would be a great scenario for the Warriors. They just got to go out and do it. Like, I mean, yes, John Poole's cool and all, but he's way too inconsistent. He looks like a guy that should be a 5 to 10 minute, you know, per night type of player right now until he gets his shot up. And I feel like, you know, he is still very young, so he's got plenty of room to develop. But right now, he's probably like a 13th man on the team that will come in once a guard gets injured, I suppose. So, I feel like in saying that, the best thing that the Warriors now need to do is possibly go out and get a shooting guard or something like that. I just feel like that's what they should do. I feel like that's what they're probably going to do. I'm just not exactly who, you know, sure who it's going to be. But again, I do suppose that Brad Wanamaker was a pretty good start at that point guard position. I definitely feel like the Golden State Warriors... Did a pretty good thing by actually signing him. And, of course, he probably was most likely going to leave anyway. Whether or not to the Warriors or not. Just based on the fact that the Boston Celtics did actually bring in Jeff Teague to a deal. So, I suppose, you know, that does pretty much make a, a good thing for them. But, whether or not what's all going to happen out of this, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. There are reports that the Warriors are still... Uh, you know, interested in players like Jeremy Lamb, um, Jeremy Lin rather, etc., who I th I feel like would be good players to bring in, so I might even make a pretty much potential separate video on that very soon. But of course, I would very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for the latest sports-related content and news. Of course, don't forget to comment in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions on the Boston Celtics actually signing Brad Wanamaker to the team? Do you guys think it was a good idea? Do you guys think it was a bad idea? Again, I'd definitely really like to know all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. But of course, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRO slash vlogging channels. Don't forget to check them out uh, you know, in the description down below. Of course, don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already. Links for them will all be in the description down below. But as I was saying, I to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.